back to Side Note Suplex. We're going to take another look at Dark Side of the Ring Season 3. There was an interesting new topic that was added. I'm not sure if I covered that in my last video on Dark Side of the Ring. But let's get into this article. This is from WWFOldSchool.com. During a recent interview on the sports media podcast, old school WWF announcer, current AEW announcer, Jim Ross revealed that he had spent four hours filming interview content for an episode of the upcoming third season of Vice's popular Dark Side of the Ring series. The episode Jim Ross mentioned will be focusing on the infamous 2002 plane ride from hell, which happened on the flight back from Europe to the United States after the WWE Insurrection 2002 UK pay-per-view event. Here's what Jim Ross had to say. Yesterday I spent four hours with the Dark Side of the Ring guys here in my home in Florida and talked about the plane ride from hell. I told them in the beginning, I said, I don't like this topic. I don't like remembering this bull-ish. It was a bad day at the office. It was one of the more darker days during my tenure as head of talent relations, but it's going to make a hell of a special for Dark Side of the Ring. That was spawned by what they heard Conrad and I talking about. Despite only the Brian Pillman episode being officially confirmed so far, the updated list for Dark Side of the Ring Season 3 is The Plane Ride from Hell, Dynamite Kid, The Brian Pillman episode, which will most likely be the season premiere, The WCW NJPW Collision in Korea 1995, A Look into Grizzly Smith's Family, which includes Jake the Snake Roberts, Sam Houston, and Rockin' Robin, and a look into FMW Frontier Martial Arts Wrestling. Also, a look into XPW Extreme Pro Wrestling, Bruiser Bedlam, aka Johnny Canine, famous indie wrestler Nick Gage, and a look into Mortis, aka Chris Canyon. Besides JR being in the Plane Ride from Hell chapter, Stone Cold Steve Austin has also been confirmed to be a part of Dark Side of the Ring Series 3 in the Brian Pillman episode and Jim Cornette will be heavily featured in the Bruiser Bedlam episode. And if you go back into the archive, I do have a video on Stone Cold being involved in this upcoming season. But before season three gets released later this year, another brand new series will debut on Vice TV on March 9th called Dark Side of the Ring Confidential, in which the producers of Dark Side of the Ring will sit down with the famous podcast host, Ric Flair's son-in-law, Conrad Thompson, to discuss episodes from the first two seasons and that will premiere um, on Vice TV. And the first episode of that confidential series will focus on season one's Gino Hernandez episode. Now let's dive deeper into the plane ride from hell. On May 5th, 2002, the WWF crew was returning from a European tour and a taping of Insurrection when a mix of an open bar, lack of sleep, and annoyed performers cultivated in an incredibly controversial plane ride from London to New York City that is still talked about today. If you haven't heard about it, here are six things that occurred on the trip. This article is from WWF Old School. 6. Bradshaw vs. Michael Hayes Michael P.S. Hayes and alcohol is not a good combo. During this trip, Hayes got absolutely hammered and was up to no good. According to X-Pac, Hayes attempted to urinate on Linda McMahon while he was still conscious, which goes to show you how much Hayes would have had since he couldn't recognize a McMahon from a toilet. Wow. Yeah, yeah, no. First, Michael Hayes, he almost pissed on Linda McMahon and the... He was like all fucked up and he's gone and he's like this and he's like trying to like piss on he don't know it's lindy he thinks he's at the fuck bathroom and he's wow. like wait a minute wait a minute and he just keeps saying wait a minute over and over again finally somebody got him did she ever see what was i can't imagine or not i mean i'm not the only one i can verify oh. this story so <laughs> what was his gimmick booze I can't say what his gimmick necessarily To be was. that out of it that you don't recognize Probably. the boss's it's wife? The same thing a lot of us, the rest Jesus. of us were. We were Probably. That GHB. Well, Hayes ended up coincidentally sitting next to a sleeping Bradshaw, who was nursing off a head wound from blading the night before. Hayes began poking and roughing up the wound to the point where Bradshaw punched out Hayes with one devastating punch. Apparently, the story goes that he did something he... I had a match with Bradshaw in, uh, in England for the pay-per-view, and he got some color. So he had this big old fucking gaff mark on his head. And Michael Hayes, you know, the Freebird and Abe thing, mm -hmm. where they always go like that, he was like, boom, he fucking named, named uh, 
Bradshaw really hard. And the story goes that Bradshaw fucking clocked him and knocked him out. I didn't see that part, but it sounds good. I knew he had been fucking burying me in the, in the booking meetings. And I'd had it out with him several times in front of people because I resented the fact that he was volunteering Edge and Christian and Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy to do these ridiculous fucking stunts on these TLC matches on Raw, man. They were putting those fucking guys on Raw every night doing those things for a while. And I'm like, I hear him going, yeah, it'd be great if right there and da 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 Michael's good as job, but he's getting a little overzealous fucking volunteering guys that fall 20 fucking five feet, man. And I'm like, why don't you fucking do it? And I said, why don't you let these guys come up with their own fucking match? How the fuck are they ever going to learn how to do anything if you're fucking dictating what they should do and you're not even telling them why? And that's how you keep people dependent on you because you don't fucking teach them why. So they got to keep coming to you to ask them what they... So you anyway. said this to him. You, you said this oh, to Oh, God, yeah. Hayes. Yeah. Number five, the termination of Scott Hall. Scott Hall was known for his aggressive alcohol and drug problems throughout the years to the point where he has entered and left rehab on numerous instances. The problem, in fact, got him fired from the WWF as he was put with enough blame for the entire trip being rowdy. Hall apparently immediately got drunk upon seeing the open bar and passed out fairly quickly due to the alcohol. His actions and the fact that he was the first to get drunk was the catalyst for the misbehavior and for his termination from the company. Number four, Goldust serenading Terry. Dustin Runnels had also been drinking that day and decided to hijack the plane's intercom system to sing songs. However, not to the entire plane, but specifically to his ex-wife, Terry Runnels. He had been separated and then divorced from Terry for three years and the alcohol may have made him notice the error of his ways and began serenading his ex-wife. The love songs did not last long as Jim Ross settled him down. However, the damage was done. Dustin was humiliated and was put in the doghouse by WWF until his contract expired the next year. Number 3. Ric Flair Flashing Flight Attendants Ric Flair is a stellar drinker, and if there is one wrestler that is renowned for drinking, it's the Nature Boy. He got so rowdy on the flight that he decided to undress into nothing but his ring robe and attempt to get lucky by flashing his genitalia to the female flight attendants. Classic flair. It's a crazy article. Number two, X-Pac cutting Michael P.S. Hayes' hair. So back to Hayes. The night wasn't over. Michael P.S. Hayes had garnered himself a lot of heat over the years, essentially burying talent and causing stirs due to him being in a position of power. People seemed to generally dislike him, yet he stayed employed. After Hayes was knocked out by Bradshaw, X-Pac decided to play a prank on Hayes, who wasn't very good friends with X-Pac. While he was unconscious, X-Pac retrieved some scissors and completely cut Hayes' 2002 ponytail to a massive plane pop. Rumor has it that the following day during Raw, X-Pac taped it onto the wall in the gorilla position, much to Hayes' dismay. Yeah, but anyway, so I'm like, oh god, he's got that fucking thing in a fucking ponytail, that mullet. You know, he was still rocking the mullet, you know? Yeah. Still pretty much is. And I'm like, somebody gave me a pair of scissors. And I remember Lawler over there just fucking, just giggling. And he's like, oh, fucking Hayes put the screws to, like, Brian, you know, Lawler's son. And he knew it. And everybody's like, no, 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 you're not going to do it. You're not going to do it. And I fucking grabbed them scissors like I was pulling a fucking pair of <laughs> tape, bra tape brass knucks out of my fucking tights, you know? And I was like, this with the scissors, and everybody's looking. They don't think I'm going to do it. And I grabbed that fucking tail, and I lifted up like the and I just went whack. And the whole crowd, the fucking old plane just erupted like, yeah. And then I posted it on the wall at TV the next day, auctioned it off. There? Yeah. <laughs> and number one. Mr. Perfect vs. Brock Lesnar. With both being from Minnesota, Lesnar and Perfect had established a friendship with each other in Brock's near two-month stint in the WWE so far. With the rocket already strapped to Brock Lesnar, he needed to be careful not to publicly mess up, seek backstage heat, or embarrass the company that was grooming him as the next big thing. Also, both being experienced amateur wrestlers, Perfect and Brock decided to have a small tussle to decide who was the better amateur grappler. With Perfect being described as competitive, and with Brock's impressive physique, 
The tumble turned into a fight that got heated quickly. At one point, the two men were shoving each other onto the emergency exit door of the plane. At this point, the fight was ripped apart, and due to this, Mr. Perfect was terminated from his contract, having only just returned to the company a little over three months earlier. No blame was put onto Lesnar's part, as he was still given the push, whereas Mr. Perfect passed away within the year. So the plane ride from hell episode should be very, very interesting to go deeper into all those five things, and that will be included in the upcoming season three of Dark Side of the Ring. Are you excited for Dark Side of the Ring? Did you catch the first two seasons? Let us know what you think in the comments below, and stay tuned for more from Side Note Suplex.